Welcome to Hope Church for Wenatchee. We are so glad that you decided to make time to be a part of our service today. Here at Hope Church, we exist for four main purposes. First, to worship. We want to encounter and worship the living God. Second is to connect. We want to have fun doing life together as friends, and we believe that God has asked us and called us to be in relationship with others. Third is to grow. We want to fall in love with God's word and understand his unique giftings in our lives. Fourth is to give, to bless our community, plant churches, and send missionaries. Here's what you can expect today. We'll start by jumping into the Word of God. Grab your Bibles, a pen, and a notebook. Along the way today, you will have opportunities to write down some reflection questions. At the end of the service, our hope is that you would answer those questions with those sitting around you. After the sermon, we will take communion as a church, as it has been our practice. Go ahead and grab some juice or wine and crackers in preparation for that. I would also like to encourage you to have a time of worship in your home. If you have a musician with you, have them lead you, lead you in this time of worship. But if you don't, we have provided a worship link right here on our page. Before we begin, though, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much that we have the opportunity to be together even when we're apart, Lord, as your family and as your church. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless this time um, listening to your word, and Lord, that you would just convict our hearts of what it is that we need to hear, Lord, and speak to us, God. I pray that we would um, leave changed after this sermon. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear a word from God today. So we are um, going to go to the Word of God here in just a minute. We're in a series on the gifts of the Spirit. Um, but I asked Carly if she would come and share a testimony of something that, that the Lord did that go, very much goes along with what we're talking about. So we were praying for miraculous um, healings at one of our prayer meetings a couple weeks ago and I've been having like tons of aches and pains in my left knee for a really long time and it's just uncomfortable I stand on like concrete floors at work all day and it just was really bothering me and I was just always just really uncomfortable and that night it was bugging me so bad so I just felt prompted to get prayer for that and everybody prayed and like no joke it started feeling better immediately i wasn't having pain i was able to just like move and like jump around like i like to do and it's just been such a relief you guys because in these last two weeks i've been at work and i'm like wow like i'm not even hurting or aching or anything so i just want to share with you guys that be encouraged hopefully you're encouraged by that get prayer you know, if you have a sickness or an illness or something, and just believe in faith that God's going to heal you because he wants to do that for us. So I just hope this encourages you guys. Come, come on. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Awesome. Okay. If you've got your Bible, go ahead and grab it. And uh, like I said, we're in a series on the gifts of the Spirit. If you are... Uh, if this is your first Sunday with us, we're in the book of 1 Corinthians, where uh, the Bible actually talks about the gifts of the Spirit and gives instruction to the local church on how to, uh, how to see those gifts operating. Um, so 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to read verses 1 through 11. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. 
A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for this time this morning. Thank you that you have risen from the dead. Jesus, you are alive. And you have sent your Holy Spirit to be with us. God, we just invite you to come and fill this time in this place. Open our hearts. God, help us to see you like we've never seen you before. Help us to learn what it means to walk with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Last Sunday, as as we were wrapping up, and I was saying goodbye to different people, Sandy actually, uh, I was talking a little bit with Sandy, and and you said something that has kind of stuck with me through the week. And um, so uh, Sandy, similar to me, grew up in an environment where um, there was a real focus on what we're talking about today, the, the moving of the gifts of the Spirit. But she said, it always seemed like, the, like the, the Spirit, when we talked about the Holy Spirit, like I had a hard time just envisioning who this person was. It, it felt like a faceless person. And, and then I love what you said. You said, what, what the Holy Spirit's been showing me lately is that the face is the face of Jesus. And this is the mystery of the Trinity, right? Like if, if you know Christian theology a little bit, you know that we're, we're, the Trinity is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. And in the mystery of that, that there, there's diversity there, but there's also unity. And Jesus was very, very clear when he was getting ready to leave to go back into heaven. He was The night before he was to be crucified, and then he was going to be resurrected, and then he was returned to return the Father. He, he told his disciples, he said, okay, I'm going away, but I'm going to send another. Who is, what is it? Just like me. If you want to know what the Holy Spirit is like, look to Jesus. Amen? This is, that's the, the beauty and glory of Jesus is that he has come, and he has given us a face. We, we, in Jesus, we see our Heavenly Father. In Jesus, we see the Holy Spirit. It is the person of Jesus that comes to us through the Holy Spirit. Does this make sense? This is, it's not some, you know, may the force be with you. It's not some, it, like, just impersonal uh, uh, power that's kind of moving and wafting around. It's Jesus. Jesus is with us through His Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So, as we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, I want to, once again, I've, I've kind of done this each week, is acknowledge that depending on, on your background, we have a whole diversity of backgrounds here at Hope Church. We're, we're not a non-denominational church. We're a multi-denominational church. <laughs> we have... Uh, we have uh, gosh, you just go through the list. Probably just about every denomination represented here. Baptist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Dutch Reformed, my friend. <laughs> and on, I, mean, I mean, I'll bet you, you know, Catholic, I mean, just on and on. We, we're, we come from a whole variety of, of backgrounds. And so at, at the end of the day, we're not going back to our traditions to define who the Holy Spirit is. We're going to Scripture. 
Amen? We're not going to our traditions to define what, what church is to be like and what, 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 is to go, what we are to do as a local church. We're going to Scripture. And so when we're talking about the Holy Spirit and talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's not because like, I have the secret desire that we become like, like a super-duper charismatic church or whatever, right? Like that's not, that's not the, the purpose of it. Our goal is to be a church built on the firm foundation of Scripture. And I'm telling you, if you've read your Bible, you know this. The church in Scripture is a church full of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? amen. And so at Hope Church, we desire to fully embody and experience what Scripture says the church is to be. Scripture teaches us that a healthy local church gives room for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate. And here's, here's the important thing, though, and this is where some of, our, some, of, some of you have reacted to what you've seen in the charismatic movement, and rightfully so. It, the Apostle Paul is calling out a super-duper charismatic church in Corinth, actually, because they were missing out on love, humility, caring for one another. And so what Scripture calls us to do is, yes, make room for the Holy Spirit, but to, that the Holy Spirit must be operating between us in a loving, orderly, and honoring way. This is what Scripture calls us to. And so my prayer, as, as we're in this series, and you know, when I first kind of laid out the series, I thought we'd be in, in the series for six weeks. Well, six weeks is up today, and I'm not even a third of the way through the series. So only the Holy Spirit knows how long we're going to be doing this series for. But my prayer is that we would learn to value and encourage one another in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that as Hope Church, as a church body, we would make room for the Holy Spirit to move in our gatherings in a greater way. Okay, so let me, if you weren't here last week, I just want to recap just some of the main points that we talked about last week, and then we're going to go into finally talking about what these gifts are. It's like Christmas morning. It's like the parents, right? No, 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 we're not going to open presents yet. We're going to now eat breakfast. No, 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 we're not going to open the gifts yet. Now we're going to read about Jesus coming and back. Like, I kind of have felt like that a little bit, right? It's like, finally today, we get to unwrap what are these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but one little bit more of delay. Let me just quickly recap for you what we talked about last week, okay? So he starts off, the Apostle Paul opens this passage, and he says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities, I don't want you to misunderstand this. Now, why is he saying that? Because there's a whole bunch of misunderstanding about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Or uh, the New King James Version says it this way, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you be ignorant and he's actually writing to them. They thought they were super duper awesome in the Holy Spirit because of how spiritual they were and how many expressions of the gifts of the Spirit. You know, they've got prophecies going all over the place and healings probably happening. They're just going crazy. And, and Paul's actually writing to them and saying, you're ignorant. You think just because you have all this stuff going on that you're operating the way the spiritual gifts are to be operated. And he's correcting them actually. He's not correcting them because there's not enough of it going on. He's correcting because of the way that they're doing it. So he's writing to, to, to correct some things. So number one, he, we talked about five different principles that, that he unpacks before he goes to listing out the gifts. And I just want to remind you of these principles. The, number one is the principle of conscious control. The, 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 it seems that they had this idea that when somebody was experiencing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it was almost like, a, like a, a paganistic kind of thing would happen where they would just lose control and be just going crazy. He's like, no, that's not the way the gifts of the Spirit are to operate. The, the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit, and you are in control. He actually, in the next chapter or two chapters later, says the prophet... The, the, those who prophesy are in control of their spirit and can take turns. I just think that's hilarious. He's like talking to them like little kids. You guys can take turns, okay? Corinthian church, 
right? And so this idea of conscious control, right? And again, you're going to see this over and over again, is that the, the spiritual gifts are to be operating, but they are to be done in, in, pro, in proper order. The second principle is that Christ must be glorified. The, the gifts of the Spirit are not about you being glorified, about you becoming famous. The gifts of the Spirit are about Jesus becoming famous. Amen? The third, the third principle we talked about is the principle of sound doctrine, that if somebody gets up and gives a prophecy and it doesn't line up with Scripture, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Now, now you know, as you get into kind of the, the, like the, the application, okay, how do we do this? We, we understand that sometimes there's a filter. You know, we, we've got to learn how to not put, project ourselves and our own experiences onto what we're we're feeling or sensing from the Holy Spirit. And so that's why, brothers and sisters, it's so important that we are in God's Word, that we bathe our minds and our spirits in God's Word because that this Word of God teaches us sound doctrine. We submit to this. And so the moving of the Holy Spirit must accord to the teaching of Scripture. Number four is the principle of honoring one another's gifts. And I talked about this as a lot of times in, in, in the way that we think about spiritual gifts, and maybe, I don't know, maybe this is like an American problem, I don't know. But oftentimes, the way we think about spiritual gifts when we're talking about this and you're reading over it's like, oh, I wonder which one I have, right? Like that's our focus is, let me make sure my gift is really operating. When that's actually not the major point that Paul is writing to the Corinthian church about. He's actually telling them, look, you need to do a better job of honoring the gifts of the Spirit in those around you. And so at, as Hope Church, that's one of the things that I, I want us to be known for is that we are, are, we're, 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 we're seeing the gifts of, of the Spirit in, in other people and we're, we're saying, wow, you have this amazing ability to, you know, there's a real gift of the Spirit in you. I, I see in you like, that, like that, kind of, that kind of conversation happens a lot here. Amen? That's my, that's my prayer, that that would happen a lot. And then the fifth principle that we talked about is that the, 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 the gifts of the Spirit are given to us for the purpose of helping others. And I, I shared the, the quote that my mentor and father-in-law, Pastor Jess Slusher, uh, shared with me one time. He said this, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not given to us so that we can have a better service. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us so that we will be of better service. Can I hear an amen? That is, that is the purpose of why the Holy Spirit gives gifts to his people. The big idea that we're, we're talking about this in, in, all, in this whole series, chapters 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians is that a local church, so think about Hope Church right now, Hope Church, it will most fully be the body of Christ when all of its members most fully function in their spiritual gifts with genuine love and care. That's, that's the target that we are going after. Okay, are you guys ready to unpack some gifts now? So what I want to do now with the short remaining time that we have is I want to just actually one by one talk about these different gifts of the Holy Spirit and talk about what, what are these different gifts? What does it look like? So that you can begin to notice those gifts operating in, in the context of, of, of this local church right here, that you can, you can be uh, calling it out in, in each other. Hey, I, you seem to really have a gift the gift of healing. God seems to really use you for the gift of healing. God seems to really use you to, 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 to uh, in the gift of wisdom, the gift, or, you know, the word of knowledge, the, these different gifts. So I want to talk about these different gifts. But before we do, before we do, this is, this is the thing to always remember. No one person has all the gifts of the Spirit. Well, I... Let me rephrase, rephrase that. There was only one person that ever had all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. His name was Jesus. 
But what he has done in the providence and wisdom of God is he has distributed those gifts among his people and together we are the body of Christ. And so that's why it's so important that that every one of us realizes that, okay, the Holy Spirit wants to come and fill me. The Holy Spirit wants to come and speak to me and prompt me to, to go and be his hands and feet. And as you're doing that, we talked about this last week, we'll, we'll keep hitting this, but as you're doing that, as you are full of the Holy Spirit, and then as you learn to listen for his voice, you learn to listen and, and, and understand when, when the Holy Spirit's talking to you and prompting you, and then you begin to surrender to his leading and guiding, right? It's the, the, the New Testament and other places called being led of the Spirit. You begin to walk in the Spirit. The Spirit is able to come and, and give you assignments, and you go and do it. You're going to look behind, and you're going to realize, look, there's gifts of the Spirit that's happening. People are the Spirit is doing different things, right? And that's the way it's going to work. The church was never meant to be a place where we come to just watch several superstar, super gifted people perform their spiritual gifts. That is not the church. Most of you know this. The church, I mean, if, you're, if you have come to Hope Church and you have come to a school, you would know this. The church is not the building, right? Like, I think we of all people understand that. The church is also, though, even though this gathering right here, Sunday gathering, is so valuable. God, the Holy Spirit does so much. But the church is more than just this, this gathering right here on Sunday mornings. The church is meant to be a place where all the members are operating in the gifts of God that God have, has given them for the purpose of helping one another. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of context that I need you guys to keep in mind now as we talk about these different gifts because God gives his power to and, 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 and will, will allow his power to, to flow through us. And if we don't understand the context of what he's doing, we can begin to think it's all about us. And it's just not. Okay, so these descriptions of the, the, the specific gifts of the Spirit are I've taken and adapted from um, Pastor Jack Hayford and his, his uh, study Bible called the Spirit-Filled Bible, okay? So the, let's talk about the first one, the word of wisdom, right? A, a person who operates in this gift, someone who has the word of wisdom. This is the description. It says this, a spiritual utterance at a given moment through the Spirit. Now, this is the, this is the important thing because we can have our own, our own wisdom and it's God-given, but we're talking about something a little bit more right now, okay? This is, this is a given moment through the Holy Spirit supernaturally disclosing the mind, purpose, and will of God as applied to a specific situation. Isn't that so good? The, the word of wisdom. Let me read that one more time. A spiritual utterance at a given moment through the Spirit, supernaturally disclosing the mind, purpose, and will of God as applied to a specific situation. And I'm betting you that many of you have experienced another brother, another sister operating in the word of wisdom where you didn't know what to do. And someone at the right moment, at the right time, said, gave you wisdom, and it was like, oh, yeah, that's exactly right. That, that is the mind of God about this situation. Um, this, was, this was one of the things that, that the early church looked for in its leaders. Do you guys remember in Acts chapter 6, they, they, the church had grown so much that they were beginning to, to kind of hit white water. If you, if you know, if you've ever been a part of an organization that has been on rapid growth and, that, and it just all of a sudden everything start, starts breaking and nothing's working right anymore. And so they looked for, it says, men who were full of the Spirit and wisdom. And so oftentimes you'll find 
that God will assign, the, especially those that are called to be elders and, and senior leaders in the church, this will be one of the spiritual gifts that they operate in. Um, James, where are you? So James's and, and Brenda's dad, Richard Westra. Some of you guys know, know Richard. He's a godly, godly man. He, he's, he's, he's a man that, that has the spiritual gift. And I've been in countless elders meetings where we've been wrestling with something. And he's a, he's a, you know, he's a, a reserved uh, Dutch older, older guy and, and doesn't say much. A lot of times we'd be wrestling with a, with a thing and then right at the very end, he would just say just one or two things. And it was like, and yes, that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Right? That, that's, what it, that's what it looks like. And it's such a gift. It is such a gift. And so again, you know, I don't think it's appropriate necessarily. And may, maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. I'd have to think about this a little bit. But uh, to say, the gift of wisdom resides in me. If you need the mind of God, just come and talk to me. <laughs> right? Like, I got, it just feels a little weird. I don't know. But, but you'll begin to just see it on people, won't you? And so when you see it, man, call it out. That's what, that's what I'm encouraging you guys to do. Let's start seeing these different gifts on people and say, wow. The gift, and and then, so then when you know somebody's wrestling with somebody, you know, you know who you need to go talk to. Right? So that's the word of wisdom. Okay, next one, the word of knowledge. And I can already see this is going to turn into a part three really soon here. Uh, the word of knowledge. This is the description um, from, again, from the Spirit-filled Bible. says this, A supernatural revelation of information pertaining to a person or an event given for a specific person. And it's often a sign to someone that God is present with them and sees them. The word of knowledge. Uh, the biblical example that I'll, I'll give you is Jesus and the Samaritan woman. John chapter 4. If you, know that, if you know that story, Jesus meets this, this Samaritan woman at a well. It's an odd time of day for, for a woman to be at the well in that, in that cultural context. And Jesus begins to tell her things that no one know, should know about this woman. He begins to tell her, or he, he uh, tells her, he says, hey, go and get your husband. And she tells him, I don't have a husband. He goes, you have spoken correctly. You've had five of them. <laughs> and oh, this moment of, oh, God sees me. Right? That, that's, that is the word of knowledge. And I'm betting some of you have, have experienced that. Um, Katie's, Katie's mom, some of you know uh, Lynn, she, this is a gift that I believe Lynn has. And there's been a couple of times that's been really, really significant. Um, probably about, I'm guessing, 10 years or so ago, um, a guest ministry was, was in Quincy. Uh, by the name, his, his name is Stan Fleming. It's a family friend from, from way, way back. They pastored uh, at the same time in different places. And so anyways, he came and he's, he's, uh, he's ministering in the church. Stan's a brilliant man. Those are, some of you guys know Stan. He's got, I think, several doctorates, has, has all this. You know, he's, a, he's like just a, um, he, he's very well versed in early church history. And he's just very, very brilliant. And, um, and he's coming. And I think he was actually doing a seminar on early church history at the church there in Quincy. And, um, and, what, what uh, Jess and Lynn didn't know about is that Stan had gotten a couple of invitations from two different people that actually didn't know each other in the nation of Pakistan to come over to Pakistan. They were inviting Stan to come and minister in Pakistan. And so Stan told them, you know, what every good Christian is supposed to say, well, let me pray about it. Yeah, right. That's never going to happen, right? And so, and so he's he's ministering in Quincy, and I think it was like on a break, and so they're back. At, he's back at Jess and Lynn's house, and they're actually sitting down to watch a football game, and uh, and he turns the TV on, and he feels the Holy Spirit come and nudge him, 
hey, you said you were going to pray about that Pakistan thing. Oh, yeah, sorry, Lord. <laughs> okay, Lord, to hear him tell it is just hilarious. He goes, Lord, do you want me to go to Pakistan? He kind of waits. Okay, good, nothing. <laughs> he, turns the, he, he had turned the TV off, right? He turned the game off. So he turns the, the game back on. And all of a sudden, Lynn comes walking in the room and stands between him and the TV, and he's kind of like, excuse me, can you get out of the way here? And she goes, um, so I don't know if this is going to mean anything to you or not, but I was over in the other room and just doing dishes, reminding my own business, and the Holy Spirit told me to, to one word that I was supposed to tell you. So I, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if this means anything to you, but the, the, the Holy Spirit says, go. <laughs> <laughs> Stan goes, excuse me? What? Is it? Yeah, go. Well, that word of knowledge has opened up a significant door of ministry. And I, I apologize. I meant to go and get some of the stats of, of what has happened in Pakistan since then. But I'll just err on the conservative side for y'all. There, there's, uh, he's done multiple evangelistic crusades that have seen tens of thousands of people come to Christ. He, he's partnered with many churches in Pakistan and ha- actually helped to plant new churches. And then one of the coolest things and, and heart-wrenching things is Pakistan has a huge slave population. And they, 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 they work in these brickyards. And if you just knew the story, your, your heart would just absolutely break. Well, what he has done is he's partnered with different churches to go and they start schools for the slave children in this, in those brickyards, and they have done it long enough now that they're beginning to have some of those young kids graduate from school and, and go on and be able to escape that, that cycle of poverty and slavery. That's the word of knowledge, right? That's what it looks like. Okay, one more, just because it especially pertains to us here in this room. So Katie and I, our, the dream of our heart was to, was to plant a church. Ever since Bible college, my, my, the, the day I graduated Bible college, at the graduation c- ceremony, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me, You're, I'm going to use you to plant churches. And then, and then the Holy Spirit just sent me on a whole different like, direction. It was like, and every time, you know, I was like, maybe now's the time to plant a church. And, and the, it would be No. Maybe now, no. <laughs> to the point, I was like, okay, I give up. <laughs> and then, and then, and then the, the Lord called us to Quincy and, and, and kind of gave us a, a whole different assignment. And, we're, and we were all in, okay. You know, I, I told, I can't remember who I was talking to. Oh, it was the, the, the first Friday. I said, I drive past, like we were all into the point that I, I would drive past the, the cemetery in Quincy and be like, that's where I'm going to be buried. I, I am, I am going to give my life to Quincy. We're going to see God move in this place. And, and then uh, it, we, the Lord just did a whole bunch of really neat things. We, we were able to build a really strong leadership team. And so then we started to feel like, okay, I think God wants to use us to plant a church. And so we had some people come in and talk to our leadership team about what that would be like. And the next Sunday, I'm in worship, and I feel the Holy Spirit ask me the question. I don't know if this has ever happened to you where he just comes and just out of the blue would you be willing to plant a church in Wenatchee? And um, I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but it, I was wrestling with that. And, and but it finally said, yes, Lord, if, that's, if this is really you and this is really the time, finally, yes. The answer is yes. Several days later, we're on a, on a drive from Quincy to, to Wenatchee to go on a date because that's what you do. You don't go on dates in Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So for those who live in Quincy, that was rude. I'm sorry. I repent. <laughs> Brenda, where's Brenda? Sorry. Uh, and, and Katie turns to me on the drive and goes, do you think the Lord would have us plant a church in Wenatchee? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> and, well, probably because like he just told me that, right? So, so we're talking about this. And so then we're praying for several months, several months and, and, and wrestling with what, what should we do? And again, God gave Lynn a word of knowledge. She comes over to our house, says three months ago, which was the exact time that the Lord had given Katie and I that word. Three months ago, 
the Holy Spirit told me you guys are leaving to plant a church in Quincy or to in Wenatchee. And so, Hope Church, this right here is the fruit of a word of knowledge. That's that is what the gifts of the Spirit looks like. It is precious. It bears wonderful fruit. Would you all stand with me? Can we sing, Lord, I give you my heart? And then um, I'm gonna, we're going to have a time of prayer. James doesn't know any of this yet. <laughs>
so that as we take the, the bread and the juice and as we remember what our Lord has done for us, that we just stand on that. We stand on the victory that he has given us. You know, sometimes our circumstances, they don't look very victorious. <laughs> Things that have happened this past week, you're like, man, I just don't, I don't feel that victory. But today, right now, in us taking communion, we are going to remember, okay, God has given us the victory. He is working in our situation. We have been made new through the body and the blood of our Savior. And so let's just stand together in that place of victory and just believe and just remember and be thankful for all that God has done for us. I'm going to read one scripture, and it's found in Colossians. It's chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. And so I'm going to read it right now. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your, our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Isn't that great? So we have that same victory because we have been made alive with Christ. He has given us the victory and he has shamed <laughs> all of those powers. So he has shamed them publicly, it says. So it's like, uh-uh, you're not getting away with that. And so right now, I would just like to agree with you today that as we remember, this is a time of remembrance that we also remember that we can stand on the victory that our Lord Jesus has given us. So if you want to go ahead and we'll take the cracker right now and I'm just going to pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your body. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have given us. Lord, we remember all the pain and the suffering that you went through for us. Lord, so that we could be free, so that we could be made alive with you, so that we could be made the righteousness of God through you, Christ Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. We, we thank you for your healing that comes through the stripes that was born on your back, Lord, that you have given us the healing, as it says in Isaiah. We thank you that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, we pray for healing to be released to each person, Lord, that is struggling with a sickness or with an illness, Lord. We thank you that we we have healing through your body, Lord, and through what you have done on the cross. Lord, and as we take this cracker, we just remember and we are so grateful for all that you have done. Amen. And so now we're going to take the cup and just and let's just pray over this right now. Jesus, we thank you for everything that you have done for us again. We are just so grateful. Lord, we thank you that you have shed your blood, that you went to the cross, that you took all of our sins upon yourself, that you suffered, that you died, and that you rose again. And so we thank you, we remember, we are just so grateful for everything that you have given us. And we stand on your victory today. We stand in that place of all that you have done for us. And we just receive it. And we just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. In your mighty name, amen. Thank you, everyone. It's so great to do this together, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Before we close today, I want to take a moment and thank those who've partnered with us financially. Lives in our valley are being changed because of your gift. If you'd like to support this ministry financially, there are a couple ways to do that. The first is you can give by texting any dollar amount to 84321. You can also give online at our website, that's hopechurchwenatchee.com, or through our app. And last, you can mail your check to 14 North Wenatchee Avenue, Wenatchee, Washington, 98801. So I'm gonna go ahead and pray for our offering. Lord, as we give in today's offering, we thank you that you are a God of abundance. We know that you will provide all of our needs, and for that reason, we trust you with everything that you've given us. Lord, we know it's not ours, but that it is yours, and we want to watch you multiply it far beyond our ability. Thank you for your blessings to us. Would you bless this offering? Amen. 
thanks for joining us today. We pray that you've been blessed and encouraged by this message. And we're praying for you and believing that God's best is still ahead. Go and have a hope-filled week. We'll see you next time.